Hey everyone, welcome to Chuck's Guitar Geekery. Today I'm kind of doing an overdue video of following up after just over a year of owning this Firefly FF338 and kind of answering the question, is it worth it? Firefly guitars, for those of you who don't know, have kind of gained a cult following, I would say. Um, they're made in small batches, they're dirt cheap, seems kind of near impossible to nail down when they're going to be available, what's going to be available, what colors are going to be available. And also in the early days, it was kind of hit or miss of what the quality control of the badges were going to be. Um, like I said, I got this in June of 2019, so I don't think they've had this gold sparkle finish since then. So, so let me go through a little bit of my story with this guitar now. So I bought it on a whim because I just so happened to stumble upon videos of it and it just so happened to be for sale when I looked on Amazon. So I pulled the trigger and asked my wife for forgiveness later. But I got it, I did an unboxing video, tried to play it right out of the box, and the tuners were just absolute garbage. Only mods I've done to this guitar are, I put Wilkinson tuners up here, so they were only like 30 bucks. This, when I buy a cheap guitar, I try to keep the upgrades kind of commensurate with what I paid for the guitar. I'm not going to take a $140 guitar and put $500 for the parts in it. I placed the tuners, which I only got to play one gig with it because my wife and I had our second kid last year, so any gigging was going to be put on the back burner because of that. So the one gig I played with it, that was the first time I actually got to play it at a loud volume and realized the stock pickups were microphonic as hell. So eventually I got around to putting these cheapo $28 pickups in here, like Flea or something like that. It's probably one of those things where just one factory makes a whole bunch of them and different people can slap different brands on it, but they're all Nico 5 magnets. So to me, pretty much with cheap pickups upgrading any guitar, from a stock pickup that comes on a cheap guitar, Pretty much any pickup that has Al Nico in the description will generally be an upgrade over whatever comes stock in cheap guitars. So. Other than that, that's the only things I've replaced on this guitar, and I did have to do some nut filing work. So When I got it, a lot of the slots weren't filed down far enough, so when you would be fretting on these lower frets here, it kind of, you know, the nuts here, the frets down here, and when you have to bend the string that far, that's going to throw all these low frets out of tune. Or the intonation's never gonna be right on these low frets, so. I didn't have that done before the first gig, and I spent a lot of that night kind of frustrated, like, the guitar was just in tune, why is it not in tune, so. I got that fixed, and honestly, to get the takes of stuff you're hearing now, I played, I just played this for probably about two hours. It's been a long day. My fingers didn't want to cooperate too well tonight, but in that two hours of playing, I only tuned this twice with all the wild bends I did, so. Once the tuners and the nut were there, Star actually does have very good tuning stability now. Now a lot of people with these, they also complain about the bridge. There is a bit of a rattle. I don't know if you can hear it through the microphone. You hear it acoustically. I don't hear it coming through the amp or anything, so I haven't bothered replacing the bridge or the tailpiece here. And when I replaced the pickups, I kept the electronics. You know, it seems to have a pretty decent taper on it. Um, I think they were the mini pots. A lot of people have issues with that, but all in all, this guitar has about two hundred dollars in it. I, you know.
two hundred dollars between buying the guitar, the tuners, and the pickups. Honestly, I have some expensive guitars. This is a guitar I pick up more often than all the others now. Holding the neck of this versus a Gibson, you're not holding this thinking you're holding a Gibson. Like it still feels like a cheap neck, but it's a very comfortable cheap neck. It's a cheap neck that I don't mind. I got lucky, this one really didn't need fret work when I got it. In fact, I haven't done any fret work. I haven't even adjusted the truss rod on this. You know, it has just the right amount of neck relief in it all this time. So if you're watching this video right when it comes out, I think they're about to release another batch of these FF338s. Um, I know they've been going really hard on their Les Paul style, the FFLP they're calling it. So sorry, this video is kind of a little more talking than I usually do. I don't know how many of you all are subscribers or how many of you all are finding this because you want to know about this. Firefly guitars, but when I got this, it was 140. I don't know what the price is going to be now. Probably closer to 180 plus shipping. So, and from what I've heard, Firefly has kind of gotten better quality control with each batch they come out with. So, the better quality than this, I got this for 140 at the time, and even for 200 dollars shipped, I'd still say it's worth it. Um, I know a lot of people have done side by side comparisons of this with like the Harley Benton or the Groat, and. This might be a little better for slightly more money. This is still probably, it's in my top five of my favorite guitars I own. I think I'm around 30 guitars right now, so. This is one of the ones I get picked up the most.
Firefly, FF338. Is it worth it? I say yes. And I'm saying this, you know, they're not on Amazon anymore, so I'm not getting any affiliate action if you buy one of these off of uh, the Guitar Garden's website, but I still recommend it. But I will say with the Firefly guitars, there's a lot of people that when they are in stock will buy up a bunch of them and then turn around and resell them for three, four hundred dollars. I wouldn't say this is a four hundred dollar guitar. If I had four hundred dollars to spend on a guitar like this, I would definitely go with an Ibanez or an Epiphone if I could play it first. But if you get one at the new price, two hundred dollars or less, go for it. You won't be disappointed. So for the rig for the sounds you're hearing, I'm using an Orange Terror stamp amp because I like to keep the gear generally within the same type of value. So I'm not going to use one of my expensive amps for a cheap guitar because you can make anything sound great with that. Which these Onyco 5s are pretty hot and they have a pretty good top end bite to them. So they definitely made a lot of difference in this guitar. So this is the Orange Terror stamp. Then I have a Tube Screamer clone going into the front of it. Um, for the cabinet, I'm using an impulse response of a selection B-type speaker and the Moore Radar. And then the backing track, the drum and bass, and the rhythm loop is the Digitech Trio Plus. Now for the more bluesy tune you're hearing, um, for the quiet part, I actually have the bridge pickup with the volume rolled back to probably like four. And then when it kicks to the louder, more high gain stuff, I just flip it to the neck pickup on full volume. Because even with the stock wiring, it maintains a decent amount of clarity when you roll the volume off. So that's a pleasant surprise. Anyways, enough of my rambling. Please hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. Uh, if you're gonna do any shopping on Amazon, eBay, or Reverb, hit one of my affiliate links down below to help support this channel. And next time, later.